A typical feature is the spherical combustion chamber. Spherical to give the greatest combustion volume with the least surface. Valve proportions are large for greater fuel efficiency and power. Furthermore, the spherical combustion chamber of high-duty engines permits better water jacket space for cooling the exhaust seats and guides. Also typical of the high-duty engine is the overhead camshaft with its simplicity of design and single moving part, the rocker arm. That's why aircraft engines also embody the overhead cam. Low maintenance demands that when repairs are necessary, they can be made in minimum time. The unit construction principle aims for this goal by ease of accessibility and complete interchangeability. Repairs themselves are held to a minimum by correct detailed design and the right materials, provided that the engine is built right. Long life is not drawn into or wished into an engine. It is built in. Paul Scott is proud of its ability to produce, but quantity isn't quite enough. And shop policy is based upon what experience has taught us about machines and machine tools. To work this rough casting into a finished upper crankcase involves a certain number of machining operations. Each operation, whether it be on a crankcase or any other part, has its effect on engine life and maintenance. Now, the purpose of almost every machine operation is to remove a certain amount of metal. But oddly enough, the most important thing is not so much the amount of metal to be removed, but how it is done. The machine itself is large, but the cutter, the tool that does the work, is small and important. That tool means as much to the man who operates the engine as it does to the man who operates the machine. This is the first rough cut which the cutter has made. This is how the surface on the crankcase would look if a dull cutter had been used. You might not see it if you looked at the engine, but it would be there, there and in the ledger. Dull cutters such as these with those dull gouges on the edges do not look much different than these sharp cutters. There isn't much difference until they're installed in the machine tool. Using the same tool over and over again might shorten production time, but only at the risk of shortening engine life as well. In the first cut, only a part of the metal which has to be removed is taken off, so subsequent cuts become necessary. We've been asked if it would not be faster to have all the metal removed in one cut. Yes, it would be faster, but experience has shown us what would happen. This piece was milled in one operation, while this surface has had a rough, intermediate, and final cut. And when machinists clean the chips away from the surface, they aren't being unnecessarily fussy or neat. This is why they do it. A single tiny chip will damage an otherwise perfect surface. And as the upper crankcase casting goes through the series of machine operations which will turn it into a completed part, every surface must live up to specification. This won't do. This won't do. This will do. When studs are driven, they are driven in such a way as to prevent all distortion. Then with main bearing caps attached, the main bearing saddles are line board for perfect alignment and interchangeability of shells. It's a long way from a rough casting to the finished part. And these crankcases are built to go a long way. The cylinder block together with the crankcase is the foundation on which the engine is built. 
In the routine milling of the top, bottom, and sides, the usual first, intermediate, and final cuts are taken. But the key operation on the cylinder block involves boring. The boring machines were designed and built here to hold the close tolerances of our engineering specifications. The cutters on the boring bars are set up so that two cuts are taken at the same time. The lower blade makes the first cut and the upper blade the second cut. Further along the line, the third and fourth cuts are taken in the same way. Cutting tools are frequently checked, and if they show any sign of dullness, they are changed to ensure the smooth surface that only a sharp cutter can give. Later, the block will be reamed and honed, and it will come up to its rigid specifications because of precision boring. In boring out combustion chambers in the cylinder head, the principles of good machine shop practice pay large dividends. For these operations establish the uniformity of clearance volume of the combustion chambers. A gauge on the machine controls the depth of the operation. Therefore, the volume will always be the same and the compression in every cylinder will be the same, thus eliminating the inefficiency of a rough engine. Although preliminary milling cuts have already been taken, the final cut is made at this late stage to remove any surface scratches which might have been made during handling between machine operations. And with the line boring of the camshaft bearings, the cylinder head is almost finished. Now grinding the valve seats is all that remains to be done. But the valve grinding wheel is always trued up first with a diamond dresser. Truing up the wheel is just as important to grinding operations as sharp cutters are to machining. The valve seats are ground accurately. Now watch the needle of the inspector's dial gauge. It doesn't waver a hair's breadth. Yes, precision shows its worth in the completed part. The engineer's conception has been made a reality. Large valves for power and for efficiency, and abundant water flow around valves and combustion chambers for adequate cooling. <laughs>